team. We're currently en route to defend the final super reactor. We expect what remains of the enemy to mount a truly offensive offensive. This wonderful 100 is our moment of truth. The Shirogane Comet's gonna be in firing position in two shakes. Once she's lined up, kerblam! <laughs> the alien fleet gets vaporized, and we all go home for sushi and grits. Understood? Protect that super reactor with your lives, boys and girls. Professor, your art. Remember what happened the last time you got this excited? Our destination is the lost city of Kauru. Ruins that lie sleeping in the ice beneath a sub-Antarctic outcropping called Gakken Island. Though the layout of the city is similar to its twin, the lost city of Low Rule, unlike its sweltering sister, temperatures as low as minus 90 degrees mean that your sentinel suits. How many times do I have to tell you? You know leaving the boy alone will only make things worse. We have to take him with us. He did save our lives if you bother to notice. You're nuts, you know that. Did it ever occur to you that he might be an alien spy? That it's totally suspicious a rug rat like him could open that door? I'm not a rat. Everywhere you look, you see a spy. Trust issues much? I don't need lectures from a fashion victim. <gasps> what did you call me? Mama! Save it for the enemy. Red, your thoughts on this? Sir, I... <laughs> I say we take him. The fate of the planet is riding on this. Luca has as much right to participate as any of us. Ugh, oh, I give up. I'm not done over-explaining. His bravery in the face of danger, his defiance of the invaders, that deserves recognition. Sir, I formally request to put Luca on our team. Do you even hear what you're saying, bro? That kid's gonna get us all kinds of dead. Anyone willing to take up arms is a kid no longer. And we're the wonderful one double O. I hardly think adding one more to our number will slow us down. You're all crazy. 1,000 meters to Gawken Island. We're within range of the enemy's Argon radar. Very well, Red. I take personal responsibility for your decision. Wonderful 100. Take Luca and make it count. Roger! Team! Fall in! Roger! Roger. Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play The Wonderful 101. Last time we played a little bit of Punch-Out, and today we have uh, brought out the Wonder Parkas for all the Sentinel suits. Because uh, we got a little bit of a change of environment from the last area we were in in uh, Operation 5. We are in the sister city to the Volcano City we were in. Uh, this is the Lost City of Kaurul. Kind of not super creatively named, uh, the Volcano City was the Lost City of Low Rule. And, uh, today we're gonna, we're gonna mow straight through Operation 6. We're gonna try to hit 6A, 6B, and the Boss Fight Chapter 6C all at once today, because I have some, uh, some plans that I'm trying to accelerate. We got Wonder Ice Cream, whose tagline is Lick Me. So she's a sexy ice cream truck driver? Very tasteful. Proud of that fun. I'm fucking gonna own that one. Uh, this is an enemy that we saw once, once before, and it was in one of the Kakurigas. Uh, this is one of those enemies that looked like uh, the boss Wana, except, you know, significantly easier to fight, no Serpent Terror to. to act as an obstacle. That red ray that it's projecting is uh, something we've seen before. It stops us from using Unite Morphs. But it's just as vulnerable as uh, the one that we saw in the Alfheim. It's uh, very, very easy to stun, and once it's stunned, you can just lay into it, no problem. Good stuff there. So there's going to be quite a bit of uh, using the fist like we did uh, at the beginning to light the torches, except in this case, we are gonna be using the fist lighting on fire and using it to melt 
giant blocks of ice in the environment. And there's something hidden way down here. It looks like it would be a death pit, but nope. There's a lot of really cleverly hidden stuff in this chapter. A lot of stuff that's super hard to find. I can't send anyone into that. Looks like it should be destroyable, shouldn't it? Before we go up, send people into the, the ice cold wonder toilet. Yeah, we found cake in the toilet. Everyone dig in. Everyone dig into that toilet cake. Always oh, going and pulling foods out of the fucking porta potties. Eh, it's frozen. It's well preserved, I guess. This is bugging me. I don't know what to do with this. I couldn't unite build into it. I couldn't send people in like a regular toilet. Hmm. I'm sure it doesn't house anything because the only things that I'm super concerned about finding are wonderful ones and heart pieces. And I know where all of those are in this chapter, so... Eh. What are you gonna do? This is, again, it looks like one of those little pieces of the environment that you can't quite climb up, but you can. Looks can really be deceiving when you're going for secrets in this game. Nice big pink bridge. Oh, this is cool coming up. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no! We can recover it. We did recover it. We can really get our gymnast routine on. <laughs> now, in this section, there are three different wonderful ones. There's the really obvious one right here. Wonder Rabbit, Bunny and the Beast. We have a theme going on. Uh, we have, again, another pretty obvious one. We've gotten a lot of wonderful ones out of, out of the uh, Gachapon machines. And this one is, who are you, Wonder Dancer? Show me your moves! Good shit. I didn't catch what her name was, but I wonder if that was also a Captain Falcon reference. Uh, you have icicles falling overhead. Oh, by the way, if I never showed this off before, uh, you can pick little dogus up with the gun, much like how you can pick up the spiked cannonballs. Uh, also, you can pick bigger enemies up if they're stunned. I don't think I've ever shown that before, but if you look off in the l in the upper left corner, right on that broken column, it's very hard to see. Tiny as an ant. It's Wonder Ghost! It's Wonder Ghost! We got a ghost! We have a ghost as a partner. We got a lot of bullshit. <laughs> now. Uh, also, what you just saw there is the Wonderful 101's equivalent to Witch Time. It's Hero Time, which is a new upgrade I got off-screen. And as you can imagine, it functions pretty much just like Witch Time did. You dodge at the last second, and you activate slow motion for a little bit. Actually, wait, did I have that going into the last episode? I don't even remember now. Uh, either way, you get a point bonus for using it, for successfully dodging with Hero Time. The window is pretty lenient. Not sure how I could have built that combo up more for that, but oh well. My people are really struggling to not get hypothermia right now. Look at him go. Look at him go. Uh, we're gonna have to wait for that icy waterfall. Even though, you know, like how um, Red Zenite Fist absorbs fire. You can touch lava, you can touch any bit of fire with his fists out, and he'll just absorb it. You won't take damage. You would think that the claws would have a similar property. Like, you would think with the claws out, you could go right through that ice, since they're kind of ice elemental weapons. That is not the case, as far as I'm aware. Otherwise, that environmental hazard probably wouldn't be there. It would probably be something... Uh... Solid falling like an icicle, or... Big piece of rock, maybe. Nope. Get out of the way of that. Uh, the other thing about dodging with Witch Time is it restores your Unite Gauge, your batteries, just like how uh, blocking successfully will restore a chunk of your batteries. So it's actually really handy to have around. There's not really a downside to using it.
Also, I appreciate the little beeping noise that makes when you, uh, when you... When you, uh, throw a punch while the fist is on fire and throws a fireball out. This... <clears throat> this block pushing section. I don't want to say I don't like it, because it's not that bad, but I am very fucking bad at it. Also, sorry that I can't show this picture in picture, but it's too hard to see. Uh, so I'm just punching the color that it, that will move it forward or side to side. Um, but that the front side of it is obscured from me, so that's the trick to this, is figuring out uh, what the front side color is. And just knowing the cube. Know the cube. Be the cube. Master the cube. So I need blue, yellow. And then I need to hit red so I can get over that gap. If you fall in, I think you take a little damage and it resets your position a little bit. And then what color? Good, 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 good. It's not too bad once you get your momentum going, but if you lose your orientation, it sucks. Like I just did there. Okay, I have yellow. What do I... What's opposite blue? Oh, what's opposite blue? Okay, I found it. <laughs> now that I can just go straight for a minute. Okay, now I need... No, that was... Ah, that was the wrong way. I needed to go left. Come on. I was doing so okay up to this point. Nope. Yellow. Yellow. Thank you. Uh, you might have seen what for like the couple of seconds I put this picture in picture, but it, 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 it's a very tightly enclosed space, so whatever gamepad camera problems you normally have, they're amplified because the space is so constricted. Uh, we've a toilet that kind of blends in really well here. It's even got the, the Wonder W on it. So the citizens of the Lost City of Kaurul, they knew. They knew all about this program. Also, before I miss this, uh, there's a diamond shape here, and it's kind of shimmering, so we know what to do with that. Normally, we would ignore these, but this one happens to have a heart. Normally, the ones that you have to trace the symbol, they house something really stupid like a platinum coin, or a file, or a figurine, or even just soup or food or something. That one happened to have a heart. There's one in the next chapter that has a heart as well. So we will collect them, but we're not quite done. Uh, we want to take the hammer, because the hammer will let us cross this uh, current of water without getting pushed away. So that we can collect a little bit of treasure, and then we will also try to wrap the Wonderliner around the waterfall. To pick up something minor hidden behind there. If I can get, if I'm, if I'm even remembering this treasure right. Thought there was something there. Eh, who knows. It's definitely nothing that important. So I, I don't feel that bad about skipping... Uh, treasures and secrets that aren't really important to me. <clears throat> oh, for a second I thought I didn't actually hit it dead on. It just takes a second to slow down. Yeah, that one's just... That one's just a little figurine. We can take a look at the... whatever ones we do collect uh, during the bonus episode. Oh, yeah! I didn't realize the crab enemy got... Well, oh, let me shut up and let him do his own talking. I didn't realize this enemy guy introduced this level. I thought that was actually next operation. Yeah. Crab people, crab people, crab people, taste like crab, talk like people, crab people. 
Uh, it's a big enemy crab. And it does, in fact, have a weak point that we will hit for massive damage, bringing out the old memes. Uh, once you just do enough damage laying into his kind of armored carapace here, he'll stand up really adorable like on his on his big crab legs. He'll stand up tall and you can chop his legs clean off. Uh, and once you do that, you can climb up onto his back and use the claws to pry open his uh, chitinous plating and wail away on him for huge fuck tons of damage. Now if I'm lucky, no, oh, it's not gonna let me. Nah, it's not gonna let me. I think I might have drifted too far. Yeah, I let myself drift it off too far. I thought he was actually becoming immune because I was doing damage too quickly. Oh well. Just hoping to one cycle it. That's okay though. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going at it. Uh, he'll start using new attacks soon. That's new, I think. You saw it, he almost kind of rocket propelled his uh, jump there. You saw little blue streaks shoot out underneath him. Uh, but I'm going to stay in the air a lot against him. Uh, luckily, they don't treat his carapace as armored, and he does that! <laughs> uh, he tries to get you off his back by pounding his head. Unfortunately, that does not have any kind of no bad timing on the Utemi. It doesn't have any kind of armor breaking property because he is not actually considered armored uh, like the turtles. Even his legs actually take a lot of damage themselves. Oh, I have to reopen his carapace. I thought it would just... Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Closes up. Oops. Yeah, his legs don't take quite as much damage as uh, the weak spot on his back, but not too big a deal. Oh, I'm floating up in the air. That's why I'm not hitting it. Yeah, you can build up that multiplier on him because while his weak his weak spot is not exposed, uh, he takes very little damage, and it's just, it's really easy to just wail on him. So you can build a multiplier up. Combo score is not a hard thing to hit against those guys. I like the crab enemies. Crab people. Crab people. Uh, here's another tricky secret. You draw a bridge way off screen here. And there are a whole bunch of people to collect here. No, it didn't quite get them all that pass. No, I still need another pass. It was actually difficult to get all of them. Hmm. Huh. This is Wonder Pixie from South Africa. She uses the fancy cracker. We, she's a bomb user, which is odd. And we're not done here. There's still more secrets. We have to build another off-screen bridge, and this one brings us to the only Kakariga in this uh, particular operation. Sub-operation, rather. There's one more in uh, 6B. But this is the only one in 6A. Uh, three minute timer, 50 people. Is this the... Yeah, this is the one with the panther. Hmm. Uh, so this one shouldn't be too hard to actually just complete, but... If I'm remembering this one right, combo score is the problem here. So I have no idea whether or not I'm gonna hit it. Um... I'm just going to do my best. Oh, no, I wanted that to be a rising. That would have helped uh, to keep him in the juggle state and honestly would have helped the combo store. Not sure I would have hit it anyway, though. Not too big a deal. Yeah, I'm guessing it was 3,000, so that might have actually made the difference. Because the rising would have been 100 points. Ah, well. First few missions of the game really betray how many tile sets there are. Just how many environments. Because the first, what is it, the first two or three are all in the city and then moves on to uh, Mu, which is kind of the same. It's not quite the same cityscape landscape, but it's pretty similar with a little bit of an aquatic uh, touch to it. Then you start getting into the underwater base part of it. 
and then it starts to really change up. Like you have the the outside grass section, and then the the volcano, and now the the ice temple. Plus, we have a lot more coming later too. It's actually a lot of environmental variety. I feel like it's like Bloodborne in that way, where people play Bloodborne for a couple hours and then just go, ah, it's all uh, Victorian city streets and cobblestone and shit. And it's like, did you get to the second half? Did you did you see the real blood? <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? Speaking of, of uh, variety, though, the other thing that I really like about 101 is weapon variety, and it's not like Bayonetta where you get a bunch of stuff, but it's almost 100% just preference what you use. They give you seven weapons, essentially. They it, it, Technically, it's more than that, but that's that goes more into unlockables. Um, you get seven mainline weapons, right, in, in the form of Unite Morphs, and they expect you to switch between them pretty often. Even if you have your kind of, like, your go-tos, like, I feel like the, the fist and the sword tend to be the m most go-to, but everything has a purpose. Everything has some kind of use. And you're switching between stuff a lot. Even if it's only for, like, specific... Um... Um... What's, what's the word I'm using? I'm, I'm looking for. Situational uses. Even if you're only switching to, to use, like, the situational functionality of a weapon, you're still switching a lot. You're still getting use out of them. And they expect you to switch like that. So they do a good job of making you use all of your all of your uh, Unite Morphs. And really, uh, the more you want to push yourself and then, you know, open up the combo system just for your own you know, personal uh, fulfillment or if you're trying to really fulfill combo requirements, you're going to wind up using pretty much everything uh, fairly often. More than half of the Unite Morphs, at least, have a really well-defined function within the combo system and within the score system. Like, you have your workhorses, and you have your... I would class stuff like, um, not just the bomb, but the gun, too, as, as like, support Unite Morphs that you use pretty often. And it just feels good to constantly be switching like that. It feels good when you're getting that kind of mileage out of out of your stuff. Ah. Didn't quite hit it the way I wanted. I can still shatter it though, I think. Yeah, and it's even in hero time, so I get to do some cool stuff with uh with the juggles. You can actually juggle the pieces of the golem, uh, if you if you do it right. Like, this fight alone, we've switched between, what, five different Unite Morphs? I feel like the hammer is the one that I use the least. I still can The hammer and the claws, really. Um... Like, I, I can clearly define which Wonderful Ones and which Unite Morphs I use most often and least often. I'm still getting use out of them sometimes. I feel like if I ever wanted to do just, like, a claw run, I could just for shits and giggles, it wouldn't be out of the question. Like, it could actually be a really interesting little challenge run. Like a New Game Plus style uh, claw run or a hammer run or something. Oh, that's a problem. And he teleports the fucker. Um, yeah, I did manage to dodge in time, just not within the window to trigger which time. Oh, the shockwave. Shit. It's got a really cool shockwave effect, though. It's not just the yellow rings that shoot out uh, when you use your own hammer on the ground. Ah. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Also, the music for this level sounds kind of John Williams-esque. 
if you ever get a chance, I would highly recommend purchasing this game's soundtrack. Uh, it's pretty damn terrific. And this uh, gear that this final enemy is carrying in this secret mission that we backtracked to, uh, that's the one that fits the, uh, the divot that we passed by earlier on. That was actually a much worse mission than I expected it to be. That's okay, though. We really only did this mission to get this. You can put that in its place. Uh, now pay attention to the wall to see what we open up. One of the stone slabs revealed this uh, window here that we can jump through. We have a bit of a gamepad segment. It's not really a gamepad segment, it's just switching views for a second. There's no puzzle that we have to complete here. It's Wonder Treasure! Rico Garcia. Uh, maybe a Conquistador. And a late game sword user. Pretty odd. And up here, there's one more item. It's a wonderful dummy. Which is uh, kind of like a... Uh, kind of like a gold orb. Yeah, it's more or less what it is. It lets you continue from a fight that you just died on. Which, if you're playing this game for the first time, is actually pretty handy, because you're not going to have nearly as much health as I do, and uh, you're not going to have the experience, and it's... You'll take a lot more damage than you think playing it for your first time. The game is, is actually a lot harder than um, I or anyone who's played it before will make it look. Reminded me of someone I once knew. Another pathetic earthling who walked blindly into one of my traps. Excuse me? Blue, she's just trying to get a rise out of you. To think that little baby Blue would grow up to find his way back to me as nothing but a bigger baby. Your brother must be raining down tears of joy from heaven! His brother? That does it! Team! Unite up! Roger! <laughs> yeah, we, you, we, we united up so we could run away. Uh, and this is much like the escape bit from, uh, from, uh, Low Rule, where we were getting chased by the tidal wave of lava. Except this is a tidal wave of, of really chilly water. You know? Always, he's dynamite. Yeah, uh, always the risk of hypothermia. We don't want the our, our heroes getting sick from exposure. Which time being really useful there because it makes you invulnerable. I think unlike Bayonetta, uh, while you're in which time you are invulnerable. Let's see, let's make sure I get that jump right, so I don't get drilled by that. Uh, tentacle for one. Also, so I didn't jump into the water. And our chilly ice water. Really? Three seconds off for time. Hmm. Huh. She's not getting away. Not again. Stop! It's a trap! God damn it, Blue! I'll take care of Blue. The rest of you, head to the Super Reactor. Alice, take us down immediately. Roger.
remind me of myself at your age, Blue. Reckless, hot-headed, knows more than anyone. Dude, you wished the ship for me. Some of you are more high-maintenance than others. Look, I'm putting my life on the line out there. You expect me to listen to some wuss teacher playing dress-up after all I've lost? Playing dress-up? <laughs> You're not the only one who's lost family in this war, Blue. Huh? I can still close my eyes and see Red's father being gunned down. I was there, you know, 20 years ago. Back in the time of Red's two flashbacks, playing as the original Wonder Red, Nelson. You hit that mothership with your new missile, and the battle's over, right? Give me some good news, Shiragane. You betcha. Give her a whooping with my digital pandemic missile, and them conduction viruses will spread across their dummy network faster than you can say file not found. I have absolutely no idea what you just said, but that's good enough for me. Best get this thankless business over with. I owe other one. Old Wonder Red's Pompadour is shaped like a drill, which gives you an idea of how he fights. The original Wonder Red, they don't all use fists. Nelson uses a drill as his Unite Morph and his weapon. I'm here to get you out of this mess. This makes us even. Nelson. What? Your boy snuck on board again? Will's still a big fan of jets and guns, I see. I'm bigger than you think! The enemy strike destroyed the missile guidance system. I've already evacuated the crew. Listen to me, Larry. Get my boy to safety. Staying here is the only chance I have of getting this done. Now quick, into an escape pod with you. No, Dad! I'm not leaving you! Will! Get him out of here, Arthur. You can finally owe me one for a change. <laughs> Don't be a fool, Larry. Even your sentinel suit won't withstand that blast wave. This is my job. Arthur! Okay, there are a bunch of details I want to point out. One is uh, P-Star, whose old version is a tube TV with bunny ears, which I think is the most adorable detail ever. Uh, but then there are some there are some things that you can see in the cutscene. Um, young Wonder Red, Will Wedgwood Wonder Red, Wonder Red, 
went to Clover Kindergarten, which is an homage to Clover Games. And oh god, Lambo really likes doing that right now. Uh, Lambo's leg. Right now, he does not have a bionic leg, which tells us that he lost it at some point between this and, uh, what are they on? Earth Defense War 3 at present day? Also, he drops uh, the uh, the Get Jerk remote so we can recruit those Dogu and build a big 20-person Unite Drill with a spiral pattern. Oh, I'm getting mileage out of Kemi right now. Also, uh, while you're in the flashback sequence, you get access to all of your custom blocks and skills and Unite Morphs and all that good stuff. Uh, sorry, not your Unite Morphs. Not the present day ones. Uh, anything that you bought from the store, like Guts, uh, Spring, Oh, uh, that one, I don't think I could have Ukemi'd out of. That one smashes you into the ground, and I don't think it pops you up. It's okay, though. Uh, the drill breaks his sword really quickly, which puts him in this stun state where you can get a lot of damage in. If you continuously mash the button, you don't do successive attacks. The drill just continuous, continuously, I cannot speak right now, uh, spins up. Also, Lambo's AI is substantially more aggressive than at any point in time when you fight him. Ah. I'm getting too greedy with this drill. Also, it does have a little bit of recovery time once you stop hitting the button. So I have to watch that. Um, why don't I drag him over here and then hopefully he'll drop another remote eventually and I can recruit all those. Because uh, there's the the uh, the Gep Jerk remote, it does have a range to it. Also, I think I'm going to start doing the rising a little bit more. Um, should make some of his attacks a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, other, than, other than his AI and his aggression, there we go. 50 person drill now. Uh, other than that, I don't think he actually has any new moves. And now that we have a 50-person drill, a much bigger one, we can actually juggle Lambo. Uh, heavier enemies, remember, usually take bigger Unite Morphs to juggle. So 50-person seems to be adequate for Lambo. For Lambo juggling. <laughs> oh, it's Lambo! Lambo is back. Good to see Lambo again. Maybe he's he's uh, he's more aggressive because he has both legs and he's much healthier and spry in his youth. Breakthrough! Oh, the Pompadour Paragon's drill is the drill that will pierce the heavens.
Dude, he's getting away! Blue, stay here. We need to take out the cannon first. Red saw his father murdered before his very eyes. He blamed himself for not trying to do more to save him. For not living up to his own ideals. When Red joined the Sentinels, he told me he was prepared to face any hardship. That he would never shy away from battle. An admirable sentiment for any wonderful one, but there was more. He said he considered his work as a teacher part of his mission. That he would strive to give his students the strength to bear any burden. To pursue the future his father believed in. Everyone has their own reasons for fighting, Blue. But never forget, the wonderful 100 are a team. One for 100, 100 for all. You are many, but you are one. It's time for the big climax, little boy Blue! Whoa! Blue! You are okay! Imota's awesome robot just saved you! Is that not so, Imota? Yeah. Dude. Curses! How dare you bacteria damage my precious mech! Not this time, for shown. Alice, full speed. Main engine at maximum. Team, unite up! Roger! There are two things I forgot to mention in the flashback. Uh, one is that they actually foreshadow Nelson being the original Wonder Red at the end of the the uh, the Orochi boss fight. When Lambo over here is Nelson talking, he refers to Nelson as Wonder Red. And they just never explain that or comment on it after that, uh, up until now. And then the other is that Red's dad is just Red. It, it, like, it's clearly Red's voice actor doing a gruffer old man voice. But young Red is actually Luca's voice actor, Debbie Derryberry. Awesome. This is much better. Much, much better. He guts those uh, orange bullets. You can also do like a little barrel roll through them, but... You're not very hard up for battery in this segment. And hey, it's not a Kamiya game without a shmup level. This one is not Bayonetta's Space Harrier homage. Um, it's actually even way more dynamic than the much better Star Fox bit in Bayonetta 2. This one is pretty involved. There's actually some stuff going on here. Um, for just like a little mini game segment. It's also really long. It's very, very long. It's a grueling 10-minute endurance run uh, where you do get to use all of the Unite Morphs uh, for various things. Uh, you can circle those, uh, the, what are they called, like, the Gaia Defense Army ships, the GDA ships, and they kind of act as orbitals for you, satellites. But they are pretty fragile. Other than that, you have uh, a mortar ship who's constantly following you and occasionally firing along with you. Get that big battery up there with the Wonder Liner. So how does this work? Uh, there are different power-ups. There are three of them. Actually, there are technically four. There are three colored ones. Um, blue is a laser power-up. Red is what is giving me this big spread fire. And uh, the green power-ups, which you won't see too often, are missiles. This is the boss that... the Serpentera boss that accompanied Wana. Uh, we're gonna cut him right on down to size. Look at this. This is so ridiculous. Uh, the thing about the, the weapon power-ups is that you can keep leveling your power-ups up, but once you pick a different kind of... Like, I... I find spread invaluable for this section 
if I were to pick Laser up, it would reset my spread back down to level 1, which I don't want. So I'm not picking up any lasers. Uh, other than that, each Unite Morph while you're riding on the Virgin Victory will do something slightly different from what it normally does. Uh, slightly different attack animations. And it will also cause any GDA ships that you recruit to fly in different formations depending on the Unite Morph you have out. What you're going to be seeing a lot are the claws here. For really evident, self-evident reasons. <laughs> the claws are ridiculous in this section. But you're also going to be seeing a little bit of the sword and the gun. And then probably very little of the whip, the fists, uh, the bomb, and the hammer. They'll be used situationally, but... Claws are going to stay out a lot of the time because they hit all the way around you. They cover so much space on the screen because it's very tightly pulled in. They just cover a lot of space and do a pretty decent amount of damage, a lot of DPS. Plus, they can destroy those pillars that pop up and kind of restrict uh, the amount of movement you can do. They they still have their normal elemental functions where where they will freeze things. It's just very very handy to have. I dare say this might be the section of the game where the claws shine the most. And then, of course, we have situational uses that we've seen before from the hammer, using it as a giant steel umbrella. Oh god, am I saying umbrella again? What is the speech impediment I have? I blame Mike for this. Ever since Mike pointed out that I said that I say it that way. Son of a bitch! It's gonna haunt me forever. Umbrella, umbrella, um, umbrella. Nope, uh, whatever. It's umbrella, for all time's sake. Oh, uh, you can rack up a lot of points. <laughs> you can rack up a lot of points. Oh my god, I'm like my neuroses are getting exposed. They're getting exposed really hard. Oh, shite. Uh, like I was saying, you can rack up a lot of points just blocking the crushers with your hammer. You get 300 points every time you block. Which is good, because I think the combo requirement for this is kind of tight. Um, but I've already taken damage, so... It's not like, I, I, like I'm like i in a pure plat this right now. This section's also kind of difficult. Um, not just for how much of an endurance run it is, it, in general, just on my first time through, it's pretty hard. There's quite a bit to manage. Um, it does scroll kind of slowly, though. But you take up a good portion of the screen, and the way the screen is angled and where you're flying towards, um, if you don't if you don't hang back too much, if you don't hang out towards the back of the screen, you can wind up getting hit pretty easily. Um, unlike a lot of shmup sections though, like if you do just decide to hang out at the back of the screen, nothing spawns from from off camera behind you. Wow, I botched that. Ooh. I thought I had timing. I did not. It's okay. We're still getting our, our power-ups going on for the spread shot, which is just covering such ridiculous amounts of the screen. Try to destroy as much as possible to get points. Eh. This section can be kind of rough if you don't destroy the, uh, the pillars coming out of the ground somehow. Uh, because the danger is not running into them or even getting hit by them as they come up. It's that they restrict your your move your movement options so much. Also, I don't think this is gonna be the last uh, the last shmup section. Or the last shmup that you see on the channel this month. Uh, we got plans for a new LP after Wonderful 101, but before Kingsfield starts, 
I'm very curious to see if anyone's actually gonna guess what this one is. Uh, pretty sure I've talked about the game itself before. I don't know if I've ever brought up doing an LP of it. It's gonna be the first shmup LP since Ikaruga. Or did I do uh, Super Earth Defense Force before Ikaruga? I can't remember. Either way, it's been way too long since I did a shmup. A full-fledged one. Like, this section's great and it's pretty involved for just a... a one-off. Just a one-off in a Platinum game, but... I'm really eager to dig into uh, a fully fledged, very intricate shmup. I don't get. Not enough shmups get released nowadays. I want to see a platinum. Like, I want to see them do a full blown shmup. Not just a little segment, a throwaway segment in the middle of a. Uh, like a mini game. I want to see them do a full shmup. I think they could make something really, really interesting. I hope someone just throws money at them so they can do it. Or they just, I don't know, find the money somehow. Someone publishes it. God, let Platinum make a shmup. Fucking Camille loves shooters. He loves old shooters. I'm guessing he could make a really respectable new one that's not just an homage, but is still influenced by... Oh man, his uh, his his past love of shmups, and this is the only time that we use the unite bomb throughout this whole shmup segment. I would play the shit out of a platinum shmup. No, Star Fox does not count. Also, I don't think platinum's as involved in the development of Star Fox as people think. What I remember hearing a while back is they're mostly just doing a lot of asset creation for, uh, like, more supplemental work and artwork. Um, I don't know if they actually have, like, an integral part of the game design process or level design or anything like that for Star Fox. I think that's being handled internally by Nintendo. Although, I would love to be proven wrong, but it doesn't feel that way. Like, I played Star Fox at PAX, and it was still a really fun experience, but... I, I don't know, it didn't seem like it had the, the, that platinum touch. Like, it's certainly not a revengeance situation where... Nintendo just went to them and went... Uh, I don't know, you guys make it. We're having a rough time with it. You guys do it. Even the, even the warning symbol blaring on screen is just... Old school as hell. I love it. This is one of this is definitely my favorite. Um, for as long as it is, it's my favorite shmup section in a platinum game. Need the sword out. The sword is really, really good, especially against these higher health enemies. Because look how long it stays out. It is an insane number of active frames. Like, it stays active for a very, very long time. Uh, once Vajone reaches low health like this, she's gonna start using... Ah, crap, I got clipped. I think that might have leveled me down. Not sure. Uh, she's gonna start using this, this bombardment from the sky attack a lot. And she starts spamming the laser. Which I'm not handling super well, I realize. <laughs> this should be a good opportunity to end it before she does the laser again. No more games! Not playing! Blue! Unite sword! The Greater Galactic Coalition. What? My dear Blue, 
Did I just see you cooperate? You, the charge first, plan later, lone wolf? Are you feeling quite well? A fever, perhaps? No, just a big French headache. <clears throat> so, uh, Morda. Nice work back there. Huh? We're, uh, you know, our thing is teamwork. You work for the group, never against it. You feel me? Blue, I... Hey, one more thing. I want you guys to deck me. Hard. I deserve it. Pardon? Don't worry about the pardon. Let's just say I need a wake-up call. No holding back, okay? But, but, Blue, such vile ones. No, this I cannot be doing. I'm with Yellow. Might break a name. <laughs> I think this shows spirit, does it not? In fact, it presents an opportunity for which I have long waited. Now, Chester, chin up. Hands behind your back. Teeth clenched. Gah. Wait, Monsieur Green. As leader, I relieve the team of this request and take it upon myself. Oh, but it was to be my pleasure. Go for it, Red. If you pull your punch, I'll know. Green. I'm sure you'll get your chance. Oh, no, no, no. It was your prerogative, of course. I dare say I could do no better. <laughs> and please, call me Green, Monsieur Rouge. Enough chit chat. Wonderful 100, move out. You bet, boss. Oh, men. Always a mystery. I need to go get a drink of water. I will be back in a moment. Okay. The shmup section is extremely long for what it is. And plus we had the the all the cutscenes and the flashback. But that's only about half of the level. Maybe a little bit more than half. We still got a decent chunk of this left to go. <laughs> um, this place really interesting again because less because of enemy variety here. It's just the yuhus and a, a hoedown, but more because of the environment. Having to keep yourself out of the ice water, which is kind of uh, ebbing and flowing, receding a little bit, and keeping yourself on solid ground here. Um, which is a little tricky to do because of having to follow the shadow. And the little uh, colored circle under your leader character. With this fixed perspective. It's still pretty cool though. That's, uh... Without, without that little environmental twist, that would be a much less interesting fight. Uh, and then over here we have a little gotcha pawn. Hopefully I can get this thing turned before the uh, Dogus hit me out of it. Hopefully my people act as meat shields right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that would be... Wonder Yeti! Wonder Yeti! I think that... Well, does the ghost count? I think that's the only non-human. I guess the ghost is a ghost of a human. Uh, I, get, I think that's the only non-human and wonderful one. There was supposed to be one that was uh, a dog and a cat. And I talked about Wonder Giant before too, which was uh, actually Kamiya's favorite 
design that had to be rejected because the Wonder Giant was just too huge. Uh, also, the, the Wonderful Ones were originally called Wanda Ones, like W-O-N-D-A. And there were also plans for a lot more uh, mainline colored Wonderful Ones, but guessing they were just cut due to time, like due to the release schedule. Oh, move that too far up. Plus, oh, come on. Do I really have to go behind it and drag this backwards? I can't push it. Plus, there are only so many mainline colored wonderful ones before you start getting into really ridiculous ass ones like Wonder Fuchsia, Wonder Beige, Wonder Ferrari Red. Oh, wait, no, for Wonder Ferrari Red is a fake wonderful one anyway. That Wonder Goddess. Trying it. Oh, it's a Cleopatra reference. I thought it was supposed to be an actual goddess. Okay, so we have another one of these shapes to trace, which I'm doing poorly. Uh, let's melt the ice first. That might help me out a little bit. My drawing difficulties. Oh, use Unite Build to build up that porta potty. Is there anything in this other one? I don't think so. No. Nope. Okay, trace the trapezoid. And use the gamepad for this. Very slowly. Fuck! Nope. Drawing is a game of inches. Okay. And that's where our other heart fragment comes from. Really glad I don't have to draw a trapezoid to make any night morphs, or at least not trace one. Um, it somehow read the trapezoid input as this though, which we're supposed to to draw a heart to get this. But since we have a mortar with us now, she has her own unite morph, and it's a, a bow gun. And like every other unite morph, it has some unique properties, which we'll see later on. Uh, but for now, what I want to do is very slowly make my way back to where we got off the version victory. But I can't move too quickly because I don't want the fire to go out. So I can't dash. And I can't spring and I can't unite ball. I can't move quickly. Also, I don't think I can fall in the ice water. So I'm going to play it safe. Wait for the water to recede. Okay. Yeah, I would have definitely hit the water if I had gone a few seconds earlier. But the reward is worth it. The reward for this is actually worth it. We have to carry the fire all the way back here. So that we can light all those braziers and open up this Kakuriga. This one is similar to uh, the one where you have to pound the ground to get the, the enemy weapons. Much, much easier though. Much easier. Especially since we have witch time this time around. Um, the main thing is instead of pounding the ground to get the treasure, it, they're just in these colored crates. So it's not bad at all. This one's actually significantly easier. I think the green one is the cannon. They usually correspond pretty well to uh, what your what weapon you have to use to open the crates. Like uh, this chainsaw sword is the one you get for uh, opening the opening the sword crate. Ah, combo requirements a little bit high. Didn't realize that. Hmm. Probably had to use a lower damage weapon to build that up. Hmm. Okay, now that we got that taken care of, all that's left to do is pour the river one more time. 
heroically like General Washington at the Battle of Trenton, the Frozen River Crossing, uh, and solve this one last puzzle. Which I hesitate to even call it a puzzle, it's not exactly a brain buster here. It's just more push blocks and pressure plates, except instead of doing the left side now, we're solving for the uh, north side. Which is just pushing down the two north facing uh, uh, pressure plates. Or the two uh, uh, north oriented ones. And depressing those two pressure plates stops any spikes from jutting out and allows us to climb all the way up here. This is the route towards progression. And is this a new enemy introduction? I don't think so. I think this might be a giant cube up here. Oh no, it's another one of you. Get the fuck up out of here. Oh man, that reminds me. I uh, I went back uh, to the previous mission where you recruit yellow, and I got those two wonderful ones in the heart piece I missed back there uh, off camera. The wonderful one that I missed in the gas maze is uh, a wrestler. He's a heel luchador. His weapon is a hammer called the Baby Face Bash, <laughs> uh, and it like the the. Panther reminded me of that because I started watching Lucha Underground finally and it's so good. I'm not very far in, but man, King Puma. King Puma's the best. He's the shit. That whole show is terrific. And I, like, Lucha Underground wasn't even on my radar until I read, like, this the, uh, this article that uh, some, uh, what's this guy, his name, Brandon Stroud, who I follow on Twitter found through um, Matthew of Botchamania. Uh, I read his top 10 matches of the year for last year, and number one was a Lucha Underground match that was ranked above uh, Sasha and Bailey from uh, NXT Brooklyn, and holy shit, like, that's saying a lot, because they tore the roof down. I was there for that show. I'm so privileged that I got to witness that match live. It was fucking incredible. Um, yeah, Lucha Underground though is so good. It's I've always said that that wrestling is basically a big uh, soap opera, like a big macho soap opera. No, oh man, I've been I haven't seen a wrestling soap opera up until I started Lucha Underground. That shit's a fucking telenovela. It's a wrestling telenovela. And season two, I think, just started. So I want to get caught up on Lucha Underground and watch that. I'm so glad that, like, these past couple years, I went from just like, eh, what's going on in wrestling? I like, watch Mania is really funny, and that's kind of how I kept up with, with wrestling for a little while. And then at some point, I got back into it hard with NXT. And then I tried to get back into the WWE shit, and it's. Man, the main roster WWE stuff is fucking garbage. But yeah, NXT and, and New Japan, to a lesser extent, have helped me remember that I love wrestling. And yeah, it's sad that WWE's fucking terrible right now, though. NXT, especially, though. Keeping wrestling alive in my heart. If you aren't sure whether or not you like wrestling, uh, maybe check out some NXT pay-per-views, like the TakeOver shows. Holy shit, they have Shinsuke Nakamura and Sami Zayn at, at uh, Dallas on WrestleMania weekend. That's gonna be fucking nuts. Oh, I think this is the most I've talked about wrestling on a video in a long-ass time. And it's not just making fun of it for some goofy shit that happened in the Attitude Era. I appreciate both the, the dumbness of wrestling and and just the amazing athleticism that goes into a, a lot of stuff. And of course, just fun storylines. And I perhaps talked a little bit too much wrestling because I have not been focusing on this and this has been, uh, speaking of Botchamania, 
really, really a terrible mission seven. Oh, come on. The Super Scope, a uh, big Unite Morph version of the Unite Gun, is not that good because of the very slow fire rate and because it does not track as much. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, that is well-deserved silver. Anyway, that's enough talk of Lucha Underground and stuff. Watch Lucha Underground, it's great! Now that's enough Lucha Underground talk. Yeah, it says, I wait at the summit. Signed, Prince Vorkin. It's in Rolloian. <gasps> What's that? Vorkin? Waiting for me? I must look up right. I have to redo my makeup. This Rolloian is what exactly? It's the language spoken on the comet. Vorkin, and by Call Home, or Called Home, until Geth Jerk destroyed it. Whoa, the jerks get around. Immorta, can you tell us more? The Comet Rulo was a beautiful world, verdant, rich. Forever voyaging across the deepest reaches of space. Vorkin was born to the royal family of Rulo. As a young prince, he was kind and wise. Oh, he's oh, Can't you just see him? Oh my god, that is so precious! Pipe down! I'm trying to listen! He was everything our people could want in a ruler. Our comet's pride. Eyes that looked upon the weak with charity, and a pure heart that suffered no evil. He was our protector. But our comet's peace was shattered when Geth Jerk invaded ten years ago. The people rose up with Vorkin at their head, leading the charge against wave after wave of enemy forces. You see, Vorkin had studied the arts of combat from a young age, and was a capable warrior. Yet Geth Jerk's numbers were far too many, and our defenders too few. One by one, they fell. Soon, all of Rulo was overrun. Her helpless citizens slaughtered as they fled. Not even the royal family was safe. Mercilessly, they were slain. Vorkin's lord father, his mother, and the love of his life. Wait a minute! What was that last part you said? You did not say love, did you? Tell me you did not say love! his own life to protect me, ensuring I safely reached the escape ship. And then, looking back from space as Rulo glowed bright like a ball of celestial flame. One last, brilliant flash, and she was gone. I didn't know what became of our protector after that. It was not until many years later, after I had joined the Galactic Federation Police to pursue Geth Jerk, that I again saw him as he is today. A merciless ring. Pillager of worlds, with eyes that burn like flame. The prince I once knew is gone. Now only Vorkin, space pirate, remains. 
and we know how to stop Vorkin now. If we can keep them from drawing energy from their shark ship, they won't be able to repair, and they'll be ours. What? You mean you hadn't realized this before? Huh? Don't tell me there's another only way to stop them. Hmm. No. I think you guys can handle it. Actually, I know you can. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, am I the only one not seeing what she's seeing? It's time you face Vorkin and end this. Roger. Okay, we've definitely returned from Exposition Town now. I didn't talk through a couple of those long fights because I wasn't sure when she was going to start uh, uh, rolling off her backstory again. Uh, no harm, no foul. My throat could actually use that rest. This is a longer episode than normal. And this is all this section is. Roll through as quickly as you can with the ball. And uh, when the wind starts to pick up, grab one of the holds with uh, the fist. We have to go back into that section, though. We actually have to backtrack along Exposition Road. So we can pick up a few final remaining things before we, uh, before we put this mission in the books. You know what? One more little bit of wrestling minutia. Not even minutia. Um, I plug Botchamania and NXT and Lucha Underground is stuff you should watch. You know what else I fucking completely failed to mention? OSW reviews. Watch them. They are really, really funny. And I frequently steal jokes from them. Uh, this is the main thing that we backtracked along Exposition Road for. Oh, shake it out of the ice. Get out of there. It's for this cave full of frozen cakes. Uh, in this container. Because I'm pretty sure something important is inside here. No? Okay, I guess he's just somewhere inside the cave. Did I get him? Nope, that's... That's the info card for the Super Wonder Cake, whatever it was called. I know he's in this cave somewhere. We have to wrap the Wonder Liner just all around the cave. Yeah, I guess he was on that middle island. 
It's an upgrade for the Shiragane Drive. We're getting pretty close to maxing the health out. Wonder Santa! <laughs> He's got one of the coolest looking hammers of any of them. Any of the hammer users. We've recruited a Yeti, and we have recruited uh, Santa, who's a mythological being. And we have recruited a ghost, who is a supernatural fictional entity. Uh, weird that I didn't call y the Yeti a fictional entity in that, though. Hmm. And there's one more of these, but I don't think it's concealing anything important. It's red herring. <laughs> It's a red herring ice block. So we gotta do the wind section one more time. Hopefully I make it in one pass. There's nothing important in that blue crate, so we will ignore the shit out of it. One more important thing though, and it's right at the end of the wind path. It's uh, this wonderful one flailing her arms right over here. Wonder which rhymes with which. <laughs> Ooh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that a whole lot. It's making me laugh harder than it has any business making me. Vorkin. Ah, the fearless Blunder Red, at last. Wonder Red. To Gaze upon this spectacular view. Could there be a more fitting stage for my victory? What is that next to you? Hmm? Oh, this, some geth joke fellow, high or something. We had a disagreement. You see, he was set on defiling the glorious goddess of this sacred battleground. He's taking a nap now. So, wait. Sacre there! You dug a grave down here, then climb back up the statue to make your grand entrance? Play dramatique! Nobody cares. But the invader was one of your allies. Allies? Does the New York Fats ally with the Dizbong? I do as I please, when I please. Those who impede my progress are removed. Vorky, why didn't you tell me there was someone else? I mean, I am open-minded. I wouldn't have cared. Nobody cares! You've learned of my past? So why join those who destroyed your home? Why hurt those who would help you? Because he's a loser. He lost his family, lost his love, and lost his will for revenge. On my honor as an officer of the Galactic Federation Police, I will defeat you! Ah, oh, Immorta. I suspected your hand in this. I warn you. I will not hold back this time. Huh? Wait, what? You took him history? I warn you, if there is any funny business going on, I will know! Don't mind her. It's the nail polish. Fumes must be making her lightheaded. Prince Vorkin, know that we are the shield that protects the weak. Whatever your reasons, whatever your past, if you threaten our peace, You'll leave in pieces. Ah, that's what I was waiting for. It's no fun crushing my enemies if I can't crush their spirits at the same time. Ha! <laughs> the 
strong stand tall, the weak kneel. Such is the law of the universe. You're wrong. The truly strong are those who help the weak stand. Wonderful 100. Team, unite up! Roger! Instead of getting the boss fight that you expect against another one of the the ranked commanders of Geth Jerk, you show up and Vorkin's already killed him. This is our final encounter with Vorkin, and it's a two-part fight, and it's by far the hardest Vorkin encounter. Uh, this one here is kind of an incremental step up in difficulty. His AI has changed once again. That's not the most significant difference that I find here. I think the most significantly difficult and different thing about him here is that while he has a Unite Morph out, he is invulnerable to attacks. Cannot do anything to him until he no longer has one of his Unite Morphs out. Also, you noticed uh, after blocking, after using the Unite Guts, he isn't doing Wonder Rising anymore. He's doing Wonder Cyclone with the sword. Also, he has the Unite Tombstone now. Chugi has more uh, Geth Jerk monsters he can transform into. Uh, and he's much more aggressive once again. So you have to capitalize even harder on your openings. Whoa, God, I ran into the third spin. Other than that, it's a really honest fight. This is a really honest duel. Now, what am I doing there? The whip can actually be really helpful if you're struggling with uh, Vorkin. I still usually like to stay close to him because you don't want him using giant Unite Morphs. So it's really good to use the uh, Drill Spring and the, the Dodge Mine to keep his people knocked out so he can't use giant 100 person Unite Morphs. Um, but if you're struggling with him, another valid tactic is to keep him at a distance with the whip or even a giant sword. But once you get an opening, it's really helpful to, uh, to team Unite Bomb and then just make the biggest fish you can. Uh, if you've already got your point requirement taken care of, if you even care about going for the platinum on that. So yeah. We will team bomb and then build a really big fist and just... Yeah, look at the damage. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, Ukemi, again, also a lifesaver if I can pull it off. Um, hit it like 9 out of 10 times, but that one time you miss it. It's rough. Waiting for him to do something here. Ah. Nah, not quite. Of course, he still takes a big chunk of damage from the Drill Spring. Since he doesn't have any Night Morphs out, he's actually really vulnerable while Chugi is off doing his thing. Oh, where's... There's the landing. Good, good, good. Oh, again. Can't make it under... Ah! That's three Ukemis in a row, which is good, but the three hits that you take, not so much. Maybe I can... Uh, I didn't quite pull him up in the... No, it did, but it's in slow motion. And he's now invulnerable. Come on. Ah, he's being really evasive now. He's waiting for all of his people to come back. I'll try to keep his numbers down. Okay, here comes. That's the last spin. Okay, we can finish this. We can. Oh no, he's still invulnerable because he had the thing out.
I applaud you. It's not everyone who has been able to take me from my mazer. In fact, it's not anyone. This will be a good fight. Now, Blunder Red, witness my true power. Teo form, activate! We are not afraid, Vorkin. Shirogane drive limiters deactivated. Engaging unlimited form! Wonderful one double O. Team, unite up! Roger! He's got his own unlimited form, and he's evil, so he does the thumbs down instead. Um, you also have a lot less surface area while you're on top of the Virgin Victory, which is what makes this final Vorkin fight here uh, more difficult than it is any business being. Uh, because his reach, if he uses 100 person Unite Morphs, if you're not doing a good job managing that, can't believe I dodged that. It's good shit. Um, if you're not doing a good job managing how many people he is available to make Unite Morphs with, he can reach pretty much anywhere on the ship. And the other problem uh, with the ship being such a small surface area, when you send his people flying with a knockout, when you hit them, they don't go flying that far, so he can collect them really easily. Ah, oh, shit. It's cramped. It's a knife fight in a phone booth. But the same tools that you've used against him before, uh, they don't stop being useful here. The fight just accelerates and gets a lot more tense now. But the flow of it is still generally the same. Um, one big thing that you have to watch out here for, one, the Naginata, which is a very, very big threat. The other one is him using Unite Tombstone. Shall lose no more. 
This fight has yet to begin. It's not what you've lost. It's what you've found. A space pirate? Really? The people of Rulo loved you. And now you're a miscreant, a malefactor, another grub in the garbage pile. That? And you don't seem to know when you're beat, my dear brother! Oh. Miscreant I can understand, but grabs a little... Huh? Brother? Tell me, brother. Tell me. Why did you do it? Why? <laughs> Look upon my followers, and ask that again! The finest... hand-picked scoundrels in the galaxy! If you must know, I did it for power. The greatest power in the galaxy. Imagine if you joined me, of your own will, Blunder Red. But alas, we must fight, and you will join uh, by force, <sighs> brother. Peripheral damage from the battle is causing a massive collapse in the cavern. 6,000 meters to exit. Full speed ahead, Alice. Roger. Red, I'm deploying the auxiliary wheel. So after all that, we're still not quite done. Uh, this section's not dangerous, it's not tense. You pretty much leave the reticle almost center screen and just fire. Um, so I'm not sure what the point of this is. I don't, it doesn't add anything, it's of no value. Just kind of a wasted, dumb, extra segment of the boss fight. on radar is operating at 30% range. You think power will bring happiness to those you loved. What? That's what you're doing, isn't it? Powering up so you can take revenge. And you don't care who else has to suffer so you can have it. <sighs> revenge? For Rulo? But who would that revenge serve? Your heart is a black hole now. Feeding on hate just like the Geth Jerk. No, you're worse than the invaders. Red. Fool! You've trampled the good you should have been fighting for. Thrown away the pride, the honor of your home, all for nothing! Silence! You have to admit, Red can wax poetic. Quiet. Trampled? I... I... No! Morgan! The pirate has lost his will to fight at so early a juncture. Useless scum. Identify yourself! You may call me Gimme, High Commander of Geth Jerk, right hand to Admiral Jerginga. Our pilot has outlived his usefulness. By his excruciating prolonged death, however, he may still serve to show that Geth Jerk is not to be trifled with. Brother! Incidentally, we planned to kill him at some point regardless. The nano bio weapon I've injected him with, Viking, is one of my personal favorites. 
Within minutes, his viscera will liquefy and explode, and he will die in unthinkable agony. <laughs> Pretty nifty, huh? You're sick. No. I am a high commander in Geth Jerk. You may have bested my lessers, but that ends now. My fleet will reduce you to space dust in the blink of an eye. You have been warned. <laughs> uh, space dust? Uh, let us not be hasty. Uh, I might point out that the purple menace lying here was uh, responsible for killing at least one of your Geth Jerk officers. We had nothing to do with it. Green, sometimes you make me wonder whose side you're on. Hey, you, wait! Look at this! A child? See this pendant? This is what you're looking for! It's the master control key for all the super reactors! What did you say, boy? Luca? Take me to your leader. For real. I want to join you! Luca, no! What are you saying, kid? With this pendant, I can control every super reactor on the planet. Take me to meet your Ginga! Ah, I did not expect this. <laughs> Fascinating. Yes, boy, you may come to meet your Ginga. A special audience for you alone. I'm sure you have much to ask. Luca, wait! I hate this planet! I hate you! Earth took my mom away from me, and I'm gonna get revenge! Luca! Get back here, slime bucket! <laughs> it seems I now have far more pressing concerns than continuing to watch you suffer. Farewell, dear friends. <laughs> Now you know why I hate Luca. The little fucker. Uh, we'll talk about all the development that we just got next time, because this has been an extraordinarily long episode. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one, as always.